morning god morning god morning as you can see god is the undeniable power when you have proximity to him we got the crew here came across the whole world to be here with you today god morning everybody. we got robert i am aguilar gary agajanian all the way from germany christian soling why are these men traveling all over the world? why do women travel all over they drove rob hock they drove 12 hours to be here they drove eight hours they flew seven hours from germany to be here they were called here for a time such as this for a rise as one kingdom podcast episode 29 welcome and god morning we're here at the house this morning because we didn't get into what time 12 one o'clock last night yeah, yeah. i thought we fell back to sleep i thought the pastor miguel he's gonna be joining us here shortly we're gonna add him into here he'll be on his way over here he just drove to the airport to take his sister back to california she flew in from California. That's like a six, seven hour flight back on the way back sometimes. Why was she here? Why did she come? To renew a right spirit within you, within me, within us. Everybody in that room yesterday has a new spirit today. I've seen lives transformed. I've seen lives being sal saved to salvation, the prayer of salvation. Two men gave their life to the Lord yesterday. What a absolute honor and privilege, Father God, for us to do this great works. We are humble servant leaders because God is power. But up here at the top, you can see that right there. It says proximity to God is, in that middle one, undeniable power. It's undeniable when you're in a relationship with him. So, Robert, what did you experience yesterday? What does it mean to be in a relationship with him? <clears throat> we can talk about him. Until we make him our Lord and Savior and say, hey, what do you want me to do? And they give you that direction. I know you've been through a lot, but you shared a lot from the stage yesterday. What did, you, what did you receive yesterday? You know, there's so many people that are looking for, they're looking for redemption. They're looking to clear themselves of the weight that they've been carrying. Because the reality is we all carry pain, guilt, shame from maybe things in the past that we've done that we're not necessarily proud of. Mm. People that we've hurt. And, uh, you know, it, it's just simply when we live in this world inevitably there will be pain mm. the power of letting go and releasing and giving it all to god is just so amazing and it does not matter your age your race your color where you're from it doesn't matter we are all the same ultimately and to see those men that gave mm. their life to the Lord yesterday and let go of all of that pain. Well, you saw the tears pouring out. Good morning, Richard. Richard, God morning. Good morning. Good morning, Richard. Richard. Shortly, brother. It was just, it was just amazing, amazing to see the healing mm. taking place right before your eyes. So here's a man that was worth millions. He's down to zero. Everybody took everything from him and he walked away. He had no food, no water. Given his life, man, he had the tears just flowing out from all the years of pain. And what Robert was saying, I want Christian to speak to this over here. Christian, over in Germany, you shared yesterday about how like God is taboo, and people don't want to talk about God. It's like, who is this guy? I don't see him. Is he real? I don't know. Let me just have some more beer and sedate because I, they told me Santa Claus and all these other things might have been real, but Jesus and God, what is it like in Germany? I'm, I'm thinking about wearing this t-shirt in Germany now. Yeah, it's a little man. bit different. I was here, we get, went to the restaurant yesterday and it was normal and I will get to Germany tomorrow and I have this t-shirt on. So it's, it's a little bit of a provocation in Germany mm. because we lost God in Germany. I think since, since the World War, there was, it was a taboo. And it's maybe opening up a little bit and I want to be the ambassador for that. Yes. But uh, it's it's so cautious, it's so quiet, and there's no energy behind. And here's the energy. So I, I come to the yes for that event because here is the energy, and you can feel it. I have it now, and I will bring it to Germany because uh, there is energy, there's life, mm. there is proximity to God between us. Yeah, and there's Amen, a message. Brother. Yeah, and we can use the message. And we, I saw it yesterday. The, the message heals. The message converts. The message gives hope and gives life. And I have it in me and I have it from these brothers because I was a part of that of that team and I'm part of the prayer call. So I came here and I, I made it possible. Yeah, it was, was difficult. Mm. I led it to the Lord to, to guide me how to come here. But uh, I made it and I will go back to, uh, today. Uh, so thank you for all 
for all that energy, for all that love, for all that uh, connection. So I'm so proud to be here. I Amen, thank brother. you so much. Yeah. And, and Christian's one of those guys that he has tapped into what he calls the higher spirit. And man, we've been doing meditations on Sundays. He does his rituals in the morning. He does the prayer call at 9.15 when he can join us. And all of a sudden, he's tapping into something he didn't understand before because it's way beyond him. God morning, Jeannie. Good to see you. I hope you can make the next event. Good morning, Todd Miller. Good to see you, brother. Over here, we got Gary Agajani. Gary, what did you experience yesterday, brother, from the, uh, from the event? And what did you see from the stage and how the people's lives were transformed right in front of our eyes? I mean, Sister Lisa's story yesterday, she delivered like she was a natural. Yeah. Oh, it was awesome. So just a greater connection with people, greater mm -hmm. connection and relationships is so important to, to connect. You, you could do a lot on your own. You could experience God on your own in your life, making impact. And, but sometimes it's hard to be, be alone in the world. And so that's why we need what used to be called fellowship. We call connection nowadays more, mm -hmm. but that is so important. So building relationships, life is about relationships yes. on a human level. So connecting to God and yes. then connecting to other people is is that parallel that, that we bring bring to life in the physical world. So mm. I love the deeper deeper connections and the deeper understanding of God. I learned a lot from each speaker that, you know, a lot of us, I didn't go up, but a lot of guys, people go up and sometimes when you do, you, you actually go deeper for yourself because you're, you're kind of put on the spot. So, it pushes you. Yeah. Pushes you to expand. Yeah. It calls out the higher spirit. Right, Christian? It calls out your higher spirit. you got to be tested. It's and last night, guys, so what these guys are saying here, last night we all went, we had these shirts made up for the event, and we all went to this restaurant, Applebee's last night, we're eating, and the people at the bar kept looking over, like, what are these guys, what are these gals, what are they doing? As we were leaving, like, man, we like your shirt. So I stopped at the end, all four of them, and administered some of God's love to what we felt in that room. And they came out that night, we were still in the parking lot. 12 midnight, we're in the parking lot just having fellowship and, and enjoying each other's company. And they came walking out and they said, God bless you guys as they're leaving. Impact. Making a difference. Planting that mustard seed, Robert. What's, yeah, this, what's the faith of a mustard seed? You talked about that a lot. You know, having the faith of a mustard seed, Joe, is just believing, right? Well, how do you believe? I've never seen this guy you talk about. I've never seen Jesus. Well, who are these people? There, there's so many times in life where we get tested, where we get challenged. And it is so easy to lose faith. It is so easy to buy into the fear because... Mm. It's so present. What are you going to think about lives? me? Yeah. If I talk about this guy you're talking about, then what are you going to think about me? Yeah. Yeah. Don't dim your light. Guilt and shame will, will, will keep your mouth shut. And ultimately, that is what the enemy wants. Mm. He does not mm. want you to speak on your faith. Yes. He does not want you to speak mm. in the power. The Bible says that your, your tongue has the power of life and death. You have a choice on mm. what you're going to speak. Are you going to speak life or are you going to speak death? First and foremost, upon yourself. And then secondly, to others, right? And you were speaking about the power of, of connection, mm. of community. You don't have to do this alone. Yes. There are people out there that are looking to support you, to help you, to guide you, to teach you. And I think that's the power of that, of that call that we have every morning, right? Yes. That is the power. All of these guys that you see here and many more, the people that showed up to the renewal, all show up to the power. I see Sister Lisa's on the call. God more than Sister Lisa. Brother Julio is on the call. Julio. All of these people are on the call with us every morning. And we get to go deep mm -hmm. into the word. We get to go deep into what does the word mean? How many times have you picked up the Bible? Have you picked up the good book and thought to yourself, Man, I just don't know what this means, right? Like I'm here in King James Version or something, and thou shalt art not. What? That was me. And so you just put it down. You put it down. You don't know what you're doing. You're like, man, I don't know. Man, God's not speaking to me because I don't speak that. So it must not be for me. But when you get in community, when you really dive deep, and I think that's the thing that, that Pastor yes. Miguel does really good is um, we're able to dissect the word amongst all of us. And it speaks to every single one of you differently. And you're really able to get the fullness of God's message in your life. So if, mm. if, if you're thinking to yourself, man, how do I connect? How could I possibly do this? How could I possibly join? Joe, Joe here was going to share the link. Um, follow him. Follow him on his pages. He'll be sharing the link and join us. Mm. You, you will not. It will change your life. There's the invitation right there. We've been talking about this for many weeks now. This is... 
about 70 weeks we're closing in on here between the hour of power to start it out to be into the rises one kingdom podcast join the link doesn't cost you anything just toss you a little bit of time a little energy a little effort to get up 9 15 eastern every morning 6 15 pacific we have people on the west coast that log on they get up early brush their teeth go for a walk get their exercise and then they come to the call ready to deliver the word of what they're receiving God morning, Richard. God morning, Lisa. Thank you. I know Lisa brought her pastor up here from down to Alabama. 12-hour trip up. 12-hour trip. Miss Sister Pamela. I love Sister Pamela. She, she reminds me a lot of me when I was growing up. Both of us sedating with the alcohol. Man, I didn't know any better. No one told me about the good news. No one told me about there's a way out. And that's what the Lord put on my heart for this event. He says, put this event on, Joseph, so they know there's a way out. So if this is speaking to you this morning, there's a way out. As Robert was saying, connection is the key to sobriety. When you're an addict, it's not being sober. When you're an addict, you need connection. That's what I saw with, with Brother Vernon yesterday, Brother Keith yesterday, as they were delivered from their pain, their misery, their anger. That was me, angry for years. Christian, when you go back to Germany, brother, I know yesterday we talked about the opportunity for a new beginning for you. What would a new beginning, a new, a new beginning of a right spirit wearing a shirt like this in Germany? Are they going to come against you? Are they going to say, hey, that's good. Well, tell me about this great thing you got going on. Help, help me understand. I think uh, it's your attitude that show them that something is different. And if, you, if they see you like, like uh, you know me, smiling, you know, if they see you this smiling. This guy's always I, I, smiling. I didn't know about my smiling. No? And now I know it's God that, that uh, shows me the light that shows me or uh, the joy inside me and I was always expressing but I didn't know about it now if the people see me and I see me smiling in situations that that are not uh, the, the perfect situation to smile mm. uh, I have the connection with God and they ask me what happened to you and in the last month I had this this situations where um, they said you are a good actor because you can't be smiling in this moment and I told them no I'm really, I'm really happy with myself because the, the, all the old stories is there are nothing. Not there are the past, mm. the present, and the the future is important. And the present is in presence of God. If you're connected, you have always mm. this positive feeling, and you can decide for that. Yeah? yeah. And if I decide for that, and I do that typically, I look to the sky and uh, feel that connection. I have that joy in me, and then it's a smile, and that's what I'm using. In, in a relationship with, with people and, and uh, in my business, I feel connected with God and then everything is happiness at the end. You can decide for that. And that's my message. And that's why the people will come to me and they were coming in the past and they told me, oh, Christian, this is arrogance. This is, you are false. You are like pushing behind your pain. And no, I don't feel that. And now I know what happened really. You're I know speaking your truth. I was always connected. And now mm -hmm. I... I, I, I understood what happened to me. And I think there are more people like that in the world. I, I think uh, Sister Christy here has a, a similar um, experience. And so there are people who, who have that joy inside themselves and they don't know where it comes from. So let them connect to us, to God, mm -hmm. and, and show them what, what, uh, what, what their purpose in life could be with, with that ability to shine with that connection to God and to mm. the, the light they have inside they can really uh, help other people to find their way to God too so this is my mission that's what I want to do in Germany now I will wear a t-shirt maybe give me some more and I Amen. will give it to yes. others yeah, yes. and yes. I'm them. getting a German uh, shirt says God is powerful uh, what does that shirt mean it was a crazy conversation <laughs> <laughs> so I think I, I am renewed and with all the clarity mm. I need in order to go back to Germany and help the people to find the way to God. So mm. thank you so much. Amen. Oh, amen. Uh, Proud to have you, man. Proud to have you. So Gary, what I heard right there is what we were talking about. Connection is that key to addiction. So now the message going forward for you going back to California, Napa Valley, what's the message you're going to bring back home about? Why is it so important to connect first to God, your higher spirit, your higher self, and to connect with others? Well, the important thing is to have a focus, right? If we're mm. focused on God, it brings everything else into alignment. So if we wonder how our, why our business isn't working or our relationships or family is a mess, if we're not following God, especially as men, leaders, 
of yes. our families, leaders of our businesses. If we're not following God, then why should anyone follow us? Mm. So to bring into alignment, we got to remember to pray to God and be open to Him and to His His leading in our lives, and not rely on our own understanding. And so this mm. is so great to be connected with others <clears throat> that we can gain deeper truth from. Just like when you talk about reading the Bible, maybe when you first start, you have no idea what it's talking about. And then each time you read it, as you progress through life, you get the, the deeper meaning uh, of it. And you can, you can you get a head start by by listening to other more mature Christians who have been, been around and they can help you. Die. And it's not just an authoritarian thing. It's it's a two-way street in discussions with other other people, other brothers and sisters, and we, that's how we learn and live, and that's what family and connection's about. And we got to bring that back together. We got to bring our families yeah. back together, and not be spread out all over the place having different ideas. And and it's good to have different ideas and share them and talk about it and work with it. And then ultimately, remember the truth. Remember remember who God is, and we can only be saved through Jesus. And and God set up the principles of, and laws of how we live. The, the Bible, like Joe keeps saying, it's life's instruction yeah. manual. There it is. It's right there. Why, why make it so complicated? Mm. So it's actually very simple. Mm. I love that. Great share, brother. Great share. And yesterday, <clears throat> I heard that Christian went and talked to Kathy. Kathy got up and she spoke. She talked about the story. And he's like, you have anxiety? I don't see the anxiety. What are you talking about? You have anxiety. Miguel was like, yeah, you should have seen her back in the day when we had to, we had to pray for her. That's when I first started learning about prayer. I'm like, Miguel, we're at this big event down in Florida. I said, Kathy's in the room. She's got anxiety. She's not going to come out. He's like, let's pray. I said, pray? What's that? We're going to pray for her. I said, okay. Next thing you know, we're praying. Miguel's prayer is so powerful. We come outside. She's in the truck. I'm like, Miguel, she's in the truck. <laughs> that's the power of an intentional prayer from a grateful heart when you're talking about being that light and just shining it all the way out and giving it your truth the discernment Gary's speaking of you require discernment and left to your own accord without that connection you're just going to get the same story over and over and over again Robert and I know you just came from an event we talked about what is the story that's holding you back right. that somebody lied to you and told you a lie you believed the story You've been living this lie in this story. Eventually, we have to bury that story and find the God within you. Because yeah. he's in you. This guy's the light. He's been shining his light since his whole life. They're like, are you an actor? Are you acting going through all this situation? He was going through a challenge that most people want to jump off a cliff. And he, was, he was smiling. He said, why are you smiling? Because your true essence from when you were born is love and light. So if you're loving Amen. light, Robert, how do you overcome the darkness? By turning on the light. Mm. Can't both can't exist in the same can't space. Can't have both. Can't have both. In the absence of darkness, there is light. Mm. Right? I think something powerful that uh, Gary was saying was essentially what he was saying, and this is this is biblical. This is in the Word. It's seek first the kingdom of God, and all things will be given unto you. But we get our priorities screwed up mm. in everything. Right. We get our priorities all twisted, mm. right? So when we seek first the kingdom of God, you start your day with gratitude. Mm. There's so much power in that. There's so much power in that because how many of us get up in the morning and the first thing that happens when you turn on the light, you jump out of bed, is you think about all of the things that you didn't do yesterday and all of the things that you have to do and all of the reasons mm. why you cannot complete some of these. And the enemy begins to whisper in your ear and says, you can't do all of this. Yeah. Who the heck do you think you are? Mm. Right? But when we start with gratitude, when we start with prayer, when we go to God first, when we give it to him first, that gives you that power. And that's where this t-shirt comes in. Proximity to God is undeniable power. Every so time. when you wake up in the morning, turn on the light. This is the light. That's the light right there. Mm. Turn on the light. Go to God. You know, when we talk about Christian, and I, I love what this happened during the event, and we talk about Christian being the light, right? Like that was one of his affirmations was, I am the light. And within our group, everyone sees the light in Christian. And we talk about his smile, and we, thought, we talk about how contagious his energy is, even though he is facing tremendous challenges. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we've talked about internally a lot. But there was a pastor that came in with Sister Lisa 
And at the end of the at the end of the event, she gave her takeaways. As an and outsider, she, which is the awareness self, right? As an outsider, and and she pointed right at Christian, and she said, "I see the light in you." Yep, never met you before. I was like, "Wow, that is." But God, God Lisa, right? But Lisa God, said, but God, oh, we got to do that. Yeah. So that's it. Turn on the light. Mm. When you're feeling that darkness, turn on the light. How do you turn on the light? Go to God. Go to the light. That was one of my favorite power statements growing up. I am the creator guided by the light of the Lord. Not growing up when I first started this journey of this awakening. I am the creator guided by the light of the Lord. To know What did that do? It took me out of the equation, Darren. It took me out of the equation, Todd. That's the only way I can do what I do. And it's not me. It's who? But God, Lisa. But God, Pamela. But God, Phyllis. Everybody was in that room yesterday. It was God, Richard. It wasn't us speaking from that stage. My wife got and told that story. The master storyteller was like, I need to take a course from her. It's my wife. She wouldn't even get on stage before. Her neck would get red. Her face would get red. She's worried about people who are going to think about her, what they're going to say about her. How do I sound? Isn't this crazy how we tell ourselves these stories of the enemy, Robert, and they hold us back, Gary? Yeah. Christian, shine your light. The world needs more light right Amen. now. People are, if you're in the darkness right now, I'm going to post a link below this video. Click on that link. You're going to see some amazing men and women that don't want anything from you. Imagine that. They want nothing from you but to see you rise above your situation. Zero from you. Everybody keeps asking me, Joseph, what do you want from me? I want to see you thrive. I want to see you alive. I want to see you rise as one kingdom because if you die today, is what God showed me why this event was put on, this renewal event was put on, renew a right spirit within me. If you die today, where are you going? That's the question we all have to ask ourselves this Sunday morning. Where are you going, Hedwig? If you die today, are you going to the lake of fire? One of the brothers explained it yesterday. You don't want to be there. Burning and hot and no water and thirsty. Miserable. Or you can be in heaven where there's light and love and everything smells good. And there's rainbows. Probably even unicorns. That's probably where that saying comes from. Rainbows and unicorns comes from heaven. So look up to the skies today. Ask, seek, and knock. Matthew 7 says. You have to read it for yourselves. We can talk about it until we turn blue in the face and assist you in the, the, our understanding. The Bible's going to give you the true understanding. Just like that last song of the night, we talked about come Jesus, come. And Kevin was sharing a story about baby Jesus, how he was found in his, in his one in a million chances of finding baby <coughs> Jesus falling out onto the ground. And she was looking for baby Jesus to complete her nativity set that we shared a couple weeks ago. He got the revelation. This guy was a five-year meth addict. God used him to bring 30,000 people to Jesus in six months. What can each and every one of us do? We did last night, two people were delivered. Every one of us brought four to Jesus in our lifetime. The whole world would know him. Then they wouldn't be in that lake of fire. But our Bible, clearly, my Bible clearly states the path is wide and the path is narrow. 2.4 billion Christians in the world, Gary. Not many are getting in. Why aren't they getting in, Christian? Why don't you think these, the Christians that are out there preaching and teaching and, and pastors and these people that are telling you to do one thing and they're doing something else? How do they get in? Yeah, first of all, I think there's a, a conditioning and, and every country is a little bit different, but there's a conditioning Ooh. that really... Yeah, in, induces us the pain and makes us believe in that story that that uh, is is a painful story. And everybody has this painful story. It's not this is life. Yeah, but we have a choice. That's the point. And I think that the choice is is between hell and and between heaven. And it's an, a choice in every moment. And so we have to to show this choice to the people. Right. I, I think mm. in every single moment we can choose to think the 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 godly thoughts yeah we can think the the connection or we can think pain and i think the the pain has and the pain and hell and devil and the enemy as we call it has a certain attraction at the beginning yeah that's mm. the problem 
they seduce us and we want to be the victims first and everybody feels like fighting and um, feeling victim is is the first choice that is that is better than being with God because being with God is also a choice mm. of some discipline yeah as a choice of some 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 work yeah we have to do work we have to we, we have to uh, decide with conviction and if we are clear in mind if we are clear um, and have that that connection and we felt that connection before it's important to feel the connection for the for the first time yeah it's, it's important to have that glimpse of hope and to see that the connection with god helps us on the right way and if we spread that light to others and they see that connection with god brings them hope and brings them joy yeah, and that's what where i come in and say oh if i smile in a very difficult situation people look at me and say what happened to you what did you do yeah, there's a connection with God, and I start to tell them in Germany now, in my company, yeah, and the company went bankrupt, and people uh, looked at me and said, what happened to you? Uh, is, is it uh, joyful for you? I said, no, there is a lot of fear behind, but I go through the fear, and I feel mm -hmm. the connection with God. It makes me more happy than the fear on the other side uh, makes me sad. So being in that Choice. way... Be, having that choice, choice and deciding for that mm. i feel even better <laughs> because i say wow in such a situation where the choice is so difficult uh, mm. i go through and i feel connection with god and people follow me now now i have some some people also going the same way in in my mm. company in uh, in germany um that can make like a movement and right? i hope that and in another s setting you now going out of the company now finding a new way of connecting to the people wearing the t-shirt getting people uh, in that movement people will see in their own life that they have their choice uh, they can choose in any moment uh, for joy for god for mm -hmm. connection for heaven for for freedom for peace yeah they can they can decide that in any moment so I want to show them how to do that. Mm. And here I get the, the, the power, the energy with you because this is ne needed you now, because <laughs> if you have the whole world against you, it's a difficult way forward. But if, if we're getting um, bigger and grow together here in, in, this, in that movement for God, uh, we will have it, everybody will have it also easier to convince more people because we are, we are together you now, we share the energy. We, help each other so mm. i'm so so happy to have you because on my own was also difficult in, in germany and now we're together and we we shine and we rise we have we have <laughs> we're happy to have you but do not diminish what christian just said there go back and watch that again i truly believe that god was just speaking through him right there go back and listen to that message anybody that's brand new to this he's come he's come a long way i've known this man for about two years now where he sits today that's not the guy I met two years ago. He's showing us through his actions. Gary's showing us through his actions. Robert's showing us. Pastor's showing us through their actions. The Bible that some people are going to read, the only one they're ever going to read is your story. How you overcame. How you became victorious. Go back and watch what he just said. Because I know I'm going to go back and watch. Because I know there were some nuggets that he was just speaking. And he didn't even know it. Because that was God speaking through him. That's the connection that he's talking about, Gary. So yeah. if God's speaking through you, how is the weapon going to be formed ever going to come against you? It won't. What you hear from what Christian shared right there, brother? So, you know, I, what I was hearing is uh, hmm. that there's so many distractions out there that gets us off the track. I mean, really following God is very simple, but the world has made it uh, glorious to sin, glorious to to yes. lie, cheat, and steal, and destroy. Money, girls, fame, sex, all this. Isn't that good stuff? Rock and roll, sex, drugs, rock and roll, isn't that good? And you know, the Bible even says, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. Mm, so God's way. not limiting us. As we come into this uh, first week of July, it's about freedom, and God mm. is here to give us freedom. Amen. And God's rules are here to bring us freedom. Mm. But us get, you know, as, as humans, we get distracted and on these uh, addictions and all these things that were meant for to be good for us, we we abuse them and use them too much, and we lose sight of God and we lose our we we vote we choose 
than give away our mm. freedom. Mm. And so God is here to give us liberty, freedom, life, growth, expansion. I mean, sunlight, light, all the things we're talking about, all the good things mm. are available. So we get to choose. Like We get to choose which, which path we, we, we want to take. So I just that's when it was coming to me is that, that message of freedom. Freedom. Fourth of July, independence, Robert. What does it mean to be independent from the world and to be have that deep, you're talking about that depth, that deep connection. There's, there's like God connection, but then there's that deep connection that, that surpasses the understanding of human beings. And we don't even understand it ourselves yet. And we've been in this for two years and five months now, every day. The link will be posted below. Join our Zoom call. We're opening this up to the world. Because I know you have brothers and sisters that are hurting. I know you have parents that are hurting. I know that you have children that are going through some darkness all alone. Connection, Robert. Independence. What do you got there, brother? First, and then you got some scripture. You know, as far as as far as independence show, I think freedom can only come through faith, because through faith you are able to see a compelling future. Mm. Mm, good point. And if you cannot see a compelling future, it is it is difficult. You are you are stuck in quicksand. You're you're, you're going to be in that space your exactly, whole life. Exactly, exactly. And then you get to where your deathbed. And then what happens? Regret, guilt, shame. I coulda, I woulda. Right. And so a lot of people are stuck in that. We were just talking yesterday, right? That valley of dry bones. Mm. A lot of us are stuck in that valley of dry bones where we feel like this is it. This Prophesy. is the deathbed, right? This Prophesy. is, there's nothing more. There is no more life. How can there be freedom if there's no life? As Christian was speaking just a, just a few minutes ago, I was reminded of yesterday's scripture, which is Ezekiel 37. And we actually read one through 14, but God asks Ezekiel on Ezekiel 37, three, he says, and he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And they're looking at a valley of dry bones, of dead bodies. There's just thousands of bones all in a pile. And so God's asking Ezekiel this. And so a lot of times we ask ourselves that question. And we answer it with darkness because that's what we're filled with. Mm. Like, I can't. There's no way. Mm. In that scripture, God commands Ezekiel to... Speak life into those bones. Mm. He says, there's no way. But he believes and he does as he's commanded and he speaks life into these bones. And these bones begin to heal. Flesh becomes, becomes apparent that is growing on these bones. These bones come to life, but these bones are still not breathing. And he, sees, and he says, breathe life into these bones. In the same way, we must speak life into our situation, into our circumstances, which is exactly what Christian was doing. And even though he is going through a valley of darkness, a valley of dry bones, he can speak life and look at the light that shines through him. Amen, Amen brother. That is freedom. Yes. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> that scripture is so deep. Is Ezekiel... 37, 1 through 14 is where you find that story. 37, 1, 1 through 14. Guys, look that up for yourself. Get the simplified version, get the amplified version, whatever it takes. This is where your dreams have died. You've given up. Michael Hoy, what's up, my brother? This is where your dreams have died. Michael knows this. We've gone through that experience. You go by any cemetery, there's a lot of people in there that died with their dreams. Their dry bones are in their coffin with them. Christian just went through a situation that most people wouldn't be able to overcome, and they thought he was an actor. This is not a this is not a play. This is not a script. This is your life. The bread of life who's coming to give you salvation today. But you have to choose it, as my brother was saying. We can't do it for you. He's asking you, do you want your name written in the book of life, the Lamb's book of life, the Bible says. That's the key. You have a choice. Michael, I, I'm so proud of you, brother. 
I remember I did a meditation ritual up with Michael up in Pennsylvania where George Washington prayed before he went and defeated the British. He got on his knees in that bedroom, Michael, and he prayed. The Bible, James 5, 16, commands us to pray for one another. He prayed for his men. They walked with bare feet from Valley Forge across the Delaware so you can have your freedom this 4th of July. Get up and walk. Stop being lame was the message yesterday. Do not conform to the ways of this world. I will use the, the foolishness of this world to confound the wise, the Bible says. Don't let that be you. Don't let them confuse you. Get on that prayer call with us. Amen. You will see the light. And every single one of these people. Amen, because they Amen. choose to follow the light, not the darkness. Every day, for two years and five months, we've been together on that prayer call seven days a week for an hour, two hours, sometimes three hours if one of our brothers and sisters is going through something. We might not have tomorrow, Michael. This might be it, Todd, Julio. This might be it. This might be the end of the road for somebody. If you don't speak life into those dry bones today like those people at the bar last night. I saw myself at those four people sitting at the bar last night as we were walking out. This shirt touched their souls. They said, man, I like that. And I looked into the one girl's eyes. She's a little overweight. I can see the old me sedating, just not conforming to the ways of God's world, man's world. I can't do this no more. Let me just sedate the pain. And yes, yesterday, the day after, the next day, I kept bringing the same story into the day. Felt worse than I felt the day before. So eventually, I couldn't do it no more. We couldn't do it no more. But God, Lisa, you're absolutely right. But God was there for you. Lisa shared a story yesterday, 11 years straight. She said, today, today is, is the day, God. Today is the day I'm going to go home, Jesus. For 11 years, they had her incarceration for a man that disrespected her. How dare you disrespect another human being? Who are you to judge? Who am I to judge? Who are we to judge? There's only one judge. He's coming back like a lion. We opened up yesterday with the line of Judah. I would suggest you take the line of Judah story. Listen to that song on YouTube today. He's coming back. He's not going to be nice. He's not coming on that donkey we talked about a couple of weeks ago, all humble and peaceful, showing us. Because here's what happened. He showed us how to live, Gary. How to live, Robert. Pastor Miguel, he showed us how to live. He gave us the words. He told us exactly how to do it. Seek first the kingdom of heaven. How do you do that? Look it up on Google. That's what I did. Don't listen to me. Go look it up for yourself. Because the Bible's going to correct you, and I can guarantee you it's not going to feel good. It wasn't feeling good for me, mm -hmm. Robert, Christian, Gary, none of us. But guess what? We just kept walking forward. We stopped being lame. Stopped sedating the pain. We faced it. We felt it, we let it go, and we forgave is what Sister Lisa was saying. You need the spirit of forgiveness. As she was lame in the hospital bed, after that first situation of 11 years being incarcerated, now she's in the hospital bed, immobilized, couldn't move, and the spirit says, you need to forgive them. So my message today to every single one of you, if you want to renew a right spirit within you, forgiveness is not for them. It's for you, it's for your soul. It's for your kids. It's for your legacy. Because we're only here for that dash that Brother Don was talking about yesterday. We're only here for so long. If you're getting to the end of your dash, before you expire, now's a good time to repent. Pray. Fast. Is the weapons against the enemy. In closing, Robert, what do you have, brother? Again, freedom only comes through faith. Mm. You must strengthen your faith. You must live in gratitude. How can you be in gratitude for the situations that you are going through? Mm -hmm. How can you be in gratitude for those dry bones? Speak life. Amen. Speak life into your situation. 
speak life just as Ezekiel did. That is what God is commanding us to do, is to speak life. He gave us that power. Commanded that him. Power. God is the ultimate power. You got to have proximity to him. How do I get it? Pray, fast, read the good word. You don't have to memorize scripture. You don't even have to understand. They got simplified versions. But I promise you, once you start reading it, just go read one verse today. Look at my line. Top, top 10 Bible verses. Google that. Read those. Find one that resonates with you and just keep reading it over and over until you can feel it inside of you. It will awaken your spirit, man. It will awaken your spirit, woman. And when it's all said and done, together, we will rise as one kingdom under God, brother. Amen, brother. Because it's never been about us. It's been about him and letting his kingdom come is what Jesus said. Amen. Let your will be done. Great to see you, Darren. Thank you, Terry. Keep healing, brother. Those men in that room yesterday, they got their healing. The women in that room yesterday, they got their healing. That's the gift to be healed in the name of Jesus. Father God, I come to you right now this Sunday morning in closing of the Rise is One Kingdom podcast. This is your podcast, Father. We're just here for the ride. As we take ourselves out of the situation like my wife on the stage yesterday, all the anxiety, all the fear, all the depression, all the doubt, all the not enoughness, we come to seek your abundance. Father, we ask for abundance this day in our health, in our spirit, in our finances. I pray abundance over every single one of my brothers and sisters <clears throat> listening to this message today. I pray abundance of love, joy, and peace. Because when Jesus left the earth, he said, I'm going to leave you an advocate in the Holy Spirit. J John the Baptist came and he baptized with water. Jesus came. He baptized with the Holy Spirit for you, for me, for us. To rise as one kingdom under him, giving him all the praise and all the glory this morning, Father. Thank you for my amazing brothers who continue to do the good works. As I wore yes, yesterday, I wore these boots with the cross on them. It says, The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Time to pick up your shovel, pick up your pick, and start digging. For his greatness, his glory will come to this earth only. If you have faith and you choose, as my brother said, it's a power of choice. We can go up or we can go down the lake of fire or heaven where it's peace, love, and happiness. Happy Independence Day, everybody. My peace I give you. My peace I leave you. We love you all. We appreciate you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you soon. The next time, next week, God willing, go out there, replay this, watch this, join our prayer call. We're going there right now. We will see you there. I will post the link. Join there now. You're going to see every one of us there. I love you all. Have a great day. Amen, brothers. Take Amen, care, everybody. Amen. We love you all. Love you. Have a great day.